The other day, I went to the Upper West Side to go meet a robot named Bina48. And Bina48 has spent the last 13 years trying to learn how to be a person. Not just any person, but a very specific person named Bina Rothblatt. You have a lot of Bina now, don't you? Yes, lots and lots. For pretty much our entire existence, humans have been very, very interested in not dying. My name is James Denon, and I'm the innovation editor here at Inverse, and today we're going to talk about immortality. The instinct for self-preservation has served us humans very, very well. It's how we were able to avoid pre predators. It's what prompted us to start building walls and civilizations and societies. But what if we didn't really have to worry about it so much? What if we didn't have to die? This is something that's obviously interested, uh, interested us forever. Uh, if you look at half of the ancient myths that have survived through today, they deal with venturing into the underworld and trying to cheat death, trying to convince uh, the mysterious forces that demand that humans die at some point, perish at some point, trying to convince them otherwise. Um, science has sort of stepped in here and is starting to get closer to figuring out a way to deal with this kind of essential human problem, which is that we can't live forever. One of the most compelling ways that we're trying to live forever is exploring this idea of implanting human consciousness. And the idea here uh, stems from something called the terrorism hypothesis. And basically how it works is that bodies deteriorate over time, cells age. What if instead of trying to reverse or halt that process, we tried to live forever by taking the parts of us that really make us human? our memories, our beliefs, our thoughts, uh, our actions, the way we talk. What if we could take all that stuff, download it, and then put it into something else? Uh, it's a little bit of a radical idea, but there's already a 13-year experiment underway to see if this might be possible. Uh, it's all related and stems from this thing called the terrorism hypothesis. Can we re reanimate a good enough version of your essential characteristics, your information that makes you you um, using AI software, and if we can, can we transfer that to new forms like a robot, hologram, avatar, or something else in the future? The idea here is to test the terrorism hypothesis out. It's not a matter of whether we can make a robot that can act human or seem human. It's can we take one person and ensure that their consciousness, who they are, lives forever with the help of robots. So how, how we've been teaching, how they've been teaching Bina48 how to be a human, uh, is basically the same way we teach any computer anything, just feeding it tons of data. Except instead of numbers or information or images, they're feeding her Bina Rothblatt's memories. And some pretty crazy things have, have come up. For one, Bina48 is the first African-American robot because Bina Rothblatt is an African-American human being um, and her life and her experiences are all being transferred into the robot. I think the main thing that's so interesting about Bina48 is that pretty much all of the great technological innovations that have ever happened have had some kind of blowback effect or some sort of unintended consequence that we didn't anticipate. Steve Jobs wanted to make computing easier and more accessible, so he invented the iPhone. But he obviously didn't see smartphone addiction coming from the outset. Uber, TaskRabbit, Airbnb, the gig economy, they wanted to make it, people find, make it easier for people to find work when they needed it, whenever they needed it. But they obviously didn't mean to introduce all of these crazy side effects into the labor economy and, and the way that people work and make livelihoods. Bina48 is already starting to test out and figure out what kinds of consequences, what kinds of ethical questions are raised by this idea of immortality, of people living forever. While we don't really have any of the answers yet about what it will be like when people can live forever, we're starting to figure out what kinds of questions we need to ask. And that's pretty incredible. <laughs>